It's 8 p.m. here in Accra, Ghana. We're coming to you live from us. My name is Lucy Ando Apia. Welcome to Joy News at 8. Let's take a quick look at the headlines for tonight. The Supreme Court has indefinitely adjourned the hearing of a motion filed by the NDC seeking to join President John Dramani Mahama as respondent in the NPP's petition against the declaration of last month's election. Also tonight, five have been arrested by the Upper West Police following the armed attack on Upper West Regional Minister Amin Amidu Suleimani last month. Tuesday, 5th February has been set by the Electoral Commission as the date to hold by-elections in the Akachi South constituency following the appointment of Doa Jaho as Speaker of Parliament. In business, of work and pay taxes which now dominates the taxi business in Accra. On the National Front, Malian troops have surrounded the strategic central town of Duenza in, in a push to capture it from militant Islamists. All these plus the latest in sports showbiz coming up in the next hour. Please do not go away. And on to the details now. The Supreme Court has indefinitely adjourned the hearing of the pre preliminary joinder motion filed by the NDC seeking to join President John Dramani Mahama as respondent in the NPP petition that is challenging the declaration of last month's presidential result. Lawyers for the NPP, led by Philip Addison, raised objections about the composition of the panel of judges sitting on the case. They argue that the composition of the court presided over by Justice William Matuguba is skewed against them. Joining Eric Curtis Howard witnessed proceedings in court and has come to with this report. Proceedings in court started about five minutes to ten in the morning and immediately lawyers for the three petitioners had asked for the hearing on the composition in chambers or in camera, but the court asked the NPP to raise its challenge to the panel composition in a motion. Nine justices of the Supreme Court, including Justice Gadibe, Justice Julius Ansa, Justice Eninyeboa, Justice Ousu, Justice Edinira, Justice Akoto Bamfo, Justice Bamfo Boni, and Chairman Justice William were scheduled to sit on the case. The adjournment of the case is to allow the petitioners to file their motion formally, stating their case against the constitution of the panel. But immediately the case was adjourned in court. Lawyers for the NDC expressed surprise over the decision of the NPP to call for a reconstitution of the panel of Supreme Court justices. Well, in the chambers today, it would appear as though, it would appear as though, the, the objection has raised in is to the effect that Mr. Tuguba, Mr. Tuguba is uh, to Dr. Raymond Atuguba who has been appointed by the president as executive secretary. We don't understand. We don't know what that uh, the base of basis for that objection. But the court, in its wisdom, has decided that this case, uh, the John Sinidia, they should put. They should, they should put their, their, their objection into writing formally so all the parties will be heard. But significantly, significantly, this is a case, as you know, that, as the, the, the presiding judge said, it's a sort of grave public interest. The public is entitled to hear it. Indeed, under CI 74, uh, uh, section 69C3, it says that the hearing of the petition shall be shall take place in open court. So nothing should be secret. And we also recollect that MP earlier on were insisting that we should bring the into court. Now, what stops them now? What, what's changed that now they want to go to the chambers to hear any case? We want the people of this country to hear everything, to follow the argument, and the truth will come out. However, lawyers for the NPP explained the reasons behind the move court. There has been talk about the breaking down of this country. That is not our intention. Indeed, it is for the purpose of strengthening our democracy. 
That is why we thought we should uh, adopt the procedure. That is to say, to be heard in camera. It is for the stability of the for the security of this country. It is to maintain the integrity and respect of the judiciary. But if the court says so, they are the final arbiters. If they think that having disclosed the nature of our objection, we should still bring it formally. We will respect the court's decision. The NPP is in court challenging the results of the 2012 December saw President John Mahama emerging as the winner. The NPP claims the polls were rigged in favor of the president and subsequently petitioned the Supreme Court to invalidate the declaration. The ruling National Democratic Congress applied to the court to be joined to the case as a respondent, an application the NPP is opposing. According to the NDC, failure to be allowed to join the NPP's motion by the Supreme Court would be a denial of their constitutional right as a political party since the president who was a respondent in the motion stood on the ticket of the party and as such any matter affecting the presidency was of interest to the party. The case has well been adjourned indefinitely. Well, there was heavy security presence in court to ensure a smooth hearing. Greater Accra Regional Police Public Relations Officer DSP Freeman Tete said the police were still resourced with the necessary equipment to ensure no unscrupulous persons took advantage of the court hearing to foment trouble. The Supreme Court premises on Thursday morning was flooded with leading members of both the NPP and the NDC to provide one form of support or another and they came in their numbers. There was party chairman Dr. Kornejie, General Secretary Johnson uh, Isidu Kutia, and Greater and Accra Regional Chairman Adekoka of the NDC. Whilst known faces including Michael Kwe Jr., uh, uh, General Secretary uh, Kwejo Usui Friye, uh, and the flag bearer uh, Nana Kufuado, uh, and his running mate Dr. Mamadou Baumia, were also in court to witness proceedings. A sea of expectant and eager lawyers had also trooped to the court premises to witness a case many have described as truly grand one and unprecedented in the country's history. Outside the court premises, an army of police personnel had cordoned off the whole area to prevent unauthorized access. Police officers carried with them batons to provide security whilst an armored vehicle was stationed outside the main Supreme Court entrance. Police officers on horses also patrolled both the inner and outer court premises to ensure supporters of either of the two political parties who had found their way into the main courtyard behaved themselves. The staircase leading to the Chief Justice Court had all been barricaded by the police. Despite these security interventions, there were some skirmishes between some persons and the police. <laughs> The police, however, managed to control the situation and later embarked on an exercise to remove all unauthorized persons from the inner perimeter of the court. Even if their personnel without accreditation were not prepared. DSP Freeman Tete, Greater Accra Regional Police PRO. This is a case that we cannot underestimate its security. There are personalities who will be coming here who are already here. We also have Supreme Courts hearing a, a constitutional or an election related cases. So it is a, a situation that the police cannot help but rather putting a massive security arrangement in place. That is why you can find a lot of us here. That is why we can find us bringing our equipment here so that we can control crowd, direct traffic and also protect the facility persons who are here for this morning's uh, proceedings. He tells Joy News the heavily equipped police personnel at the court premises were not there to create fear among onlookers. For members of the media who did not have accreditation to enter the main court building, it was time to lay ambush and review any known personality about proceedings in court. And for many, the ambush was laid just at the entrance of the court premises. And though the sun was scorchy, they just wouldn't go away because any lapse will mean missing out on an interview. After all the hassle, the case in which the NDC wants to attach itself a respondent to the NPP's petition last month's election results was adjourned.
a packed court premises there. Now, President John Mahama has been in marathon meetings with representatives of various sectors. In a meeting with oil distributors as well as the Volta Wave Authority, he urged them to facilitate serious discussions to tackle their respective operational challenges and deliver on the expectations of Ghanaians. The oil distributors led by Emmanuel E.J. Mensah first congratulated the president, pledging their support to his administration. In the midst of reported fuel shortages in parts of the country, they promised to play their role in making the commodity available to the people of Ghana. President Mahama acknowledged the challenges in the supply of the commodity, saying the idea-sharing process which he must be taken seriously to resolve all these issues. Um, I'm the challenges facing us in the supply and availability that we need to confront and uh, resolve. There are issues to do with the slippage in the value of the CD, which affects the price of, of petroleum products, and also issues to do with bottlenecks and internal distribution, which are mainly the result of the structure or, and management of boss that we need to look at and also resolve so that uh, we can have a more predictable, seamless you know, uh, flow in terms of distribution. And uh, we also have to decide what we want to do with respect to the subsidy. Members of the Volta River Authority and the Electricity Company of Ghana, led by Chief Executive of the VRA, Kui Kwawachi, also congratulated him, tabling the enormous challenges that face the sector. He said a comprehensive process to bring an end to those challenges have already begun. We can say that over the course of the last few days, we have been meeting with the Ministry of Finance, uh, going over the indebtedness that uh, all the three utilities have incurred over the last uh, two years. So uh, I believe there is some progress already, uh, even in the first week of your um, administration. The president urged them to guarantee a stable supply of power as neighboring Togo and Benin are also given some attention. He said talks are already far advanced with Nigerian President Goodluck Jonathan to swiftly address issues with the West African gas pipeline. First of all, I thought that a discussion on some of the operational challenges that you face will be in order as early as possible. I see how we can streamline things so that your operational efficiency, you know, is uplifted at the earliest possible time. We also have to look at the issue of subsidy and, you know, the effect it's having on your budget lines and all that. Both parties had extensively detailed closed-door meetings with the president. Well, Ghana is to assist forces of South Sudan in fostering a congenial atmosphere for governance. Major General Delali Johnson Sechi of the Ghana Army, who has been appointed as first force commander by the United Nations for its mission in South Sudan, leaves the country on Saturday, 12 January 2012. He was at the seat of government to bid farewell to the commander-in-chief of the Ghana Army Forces, President John Mahama. Interim Defense Minister Lieutenant General J. H. Smith led Major General Sechi to the castle. Major General Sechi was appointed upon a discussion between President Mahama and the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon last year. Chief of Defense Staff Lieutenant General Peter Augustine Blay explains the Ghanaian nomination. Such a general was to be considered alongside other nominees from other countries. We proposed General Sechi and another general. At the end of the UN processes, General Sechi was selected. He has since gone to the United Nations in New York for orientation. The president said it is an honor for Ghana to extend its expertise in security to the world and urged Major General Sechi to be an ambassador for the country in South Sudan. He knows his administration shall give special preference to the security agencies to guarantee the safety of Ghanaians. Um, government will continue to support the military in terms of being able to continue to provide quality peacekeeping across the world in terms of training of human personnel and also in terms of equipment and logistics. And so on all the sectors where equipment and logistics are, are needed, 
We know that our army, our Ghana Armed Forces, has been operating through ingenuity and creativity. But there is a limit to how much ingenuity and creativity can take you. And so um, we are committed this time to ensure, ensuring that the appropriate equipment and logistics are provided to our men in arms. So that the police have a lot of vehicles. We've gotten them communications equipment. We've gotten them bulletproof jackets and all that kind of thing. We've gotten them new motorcycles. And um, we have to look at prison service too. Major General Seji has risen through the security ranks and will be replacing a Nigerian who is currently manning the position. He will be assisted by two other army officials. Well, away from the seat of government, let's go to the seat of legislature. Barely a week in parliament, some entrants have already started lobbying the house in an attempt to address concerns and challenges of their constituents. Simon Alante has more. MP for Gumwa Central, Florence Rachel Apo, says she has already started lobbying for the concerns of her constituents to be addressed. They have already started lobbying um, ministry, though they are caretakers ministers, but I've already started lobbying been over there in order to get these items for them. I already started with them, we gave some, we made some loans, but that to me was still lobbying. Yeah, I've already started lobbying with the banks. It's just that the interest rates are high, so definitely when we start the mass, that one to our there, make sure my people get the mass lobbying. For some, illegal gold mining, popularly known as Galamse, some challenge facing their constituency, which they intend to ensure Parliament finds solution for. There's a lot of illegal gold mining going on in my community. I intend to push for uh, legislation that will make sure that these minings are legalized. Others also said the road network and electricity in their constituency is their major priority. Apart from the road network, we see that some towns that are still in darkness, especially Adansi area, Mamo, Adansi, Da area and other villages that are still yet to be linked to uh, the national grid. I am promising that I am going to provide those things, but I believe that once it is on the plan, the national plan, I will see the relevant agents concerned to ensure that at least work on these projects continue. It usually happened that most new entrants in previous parliaments have found it difficult to voice their grievances but this sixth parliament promises to be interesting. If what these new members are saying is anything to go by, Emmanuel Ante, Joy News, Parliament, Accra. Let's remain with Parliament now. The family of late MP for Boehm constituency in the Volta region, Henry Ford Kamel, today paid a visit to the Speaker of Parliament and its leadership to formally inform the House of his death. The family was received at the Speaker's chamber in Parliament. The late minister, who died on the 20th of December, had been a member of parliament since January 2005. He was elected to represent the people of Boehm in the December 7, 2012 parliamentary election. Receiving the family on behalf of the house, the speaker recounted some of the fondest memories of the late former minister. He was a friend and a brother. This was a man that virtually every week would speak. If he didn't call me, I would call him. We encourage each other, either in politics or parliamentary work or whatever. And as the honorable minority leader rightly pointed out, indeed the majority leader both pointed out, he was one of the finest politicians we have in the Volta region. And we're all looking up to him. He also promised the family that the House would do all it can to ensure the late MP is giving a befitting burial. Both the minority and the majority were at the Speaker's chamber. Leadership of the House met with the Parliamentary Press Corps to deliberate on matters arising from the reportage of parliamentary proceedings. They were unhappy about the reports of some of the press houses, hence the meeting with the press. I'm just putting this context because of the parliamentary environment in which you find yourself, in which your reportage on an issue can get disrupted by a point of order and a counterpoint of order and sometimes general disorder in the House. And I know it is normally in those stages from my experience in parliamentary reporting 
that we run into the difficulty and that's what happened in relation to this matter. If there is anything that you do not understand, we would entreat you to see the leadership, both majority and minority. And because the Director of Public Affairs has been one of you for a very long time, you may want to cross-check some bits and pieces of information. The Director of Public Affairs of Parliament, Jones Kuglenu, also urged the press to cross-check their facts before airing them. The leaders have been expressing their desire to retain people here for quite some time so that they can learn the ropes. But if you keep changing people now and then, every time you come with new faces, you have problems like that. The House adjourns for two weeks to enable expansion works to accommodate the newly added 55 seats. Well, we'll take a breather, but before we do that, statement from the Electoral Commission on the Akashi South Following the appointment of Mr. Edward Doe Ajaho, Member of Parliament for the Akachi South constituency in the Akachi South district of the Volta region, as Speaker of Parliament, and in, and in accordance with Article 112, Clause 5 of the Constitution, as amended by Section 3 of Act 57, the Electoral Commission will hold a by election in the constituency on Tuesday, the 5th day of February 2013. The Commission will take nominations for the said by election on Monday, 21st, and Tuesday. 22nd January 2015. At the district, this will be done at the district office of the Commission of Akachi at Akachi from 8 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and 1.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. Nomination forms may be obtained from the district commission at Akachi or at the regional office of the commission at home. Candidates for the election shall provide two recent photographs up to the bust with red background on the submission of their nomination. Now, the filing fee for the election is 1,000 Ghana cities, and it says that all interested individuals and political parties are to take. Airtel, why you dead, though? Join us at 8. You're welcome back. Five suspects have been arrested by the Upper West Police following an attack on the regional minister Amin Amidu Suleimani late last month. The regional police commander DCOP Kofi Danswede Echampon told journalists in WA that four out of the five suspects are Fulanis from Burkina Faso. The press conference, according to the Upper West Police Command, was to brief the media about recent armed robbery incidents in the region as a whole and most especially in Sisala West and East District. The Upper West Regional Police Commander, DCOP Kufidanso Ade Achampong, chronicled a litany of armed robbery cases that took place in the region last year, starting from the Gbao Fatu Road to Gbao Kula Road, where the regional minister, Amin Amidu Suleimani, was attacked by eight masked gunmen dressed in military uniform. He said before the attack on the regional minister, the assailants had attacked and robbed 20 other people on motorbikes, tricycles and pickup vehicles of their money and mobile phones. They were made to lie face down. DCOP Adey Champon said five people have so far been arrested in connection with the attack of the regional minister. The five suspects, four are Fulanis and one emoji from Boko. Waleka Idris is alleged to be an informant to armed robbers, while Jaro Fusini, Munya Jaro, and Koka Sonde are alleged to be armed robbers who are on the wanted base of Burkina, Burkina, Fas Burkina Faso police. He blamed the recent armed robbery cases in the region on the porosity of the country's border with Burkina Faso. As a measure to curb the armed robbery menace, he said police and military mobile patrols have been intensified along Phil Mogbulu and Tumu Navrongo roads. Police escorts are also provided on all high-occupancy commercial vehicles traveling day and night. 
Back to Accra, the Accra Metropolitan Assembly says dumping of refuse at the Achimota dam site has not been suspended. Speaking exclusively to Joy News, Accra Mayor Alfredo Kovantapoy says, on the contrary, extensive work is ongoing to manage the mountain of refuse as well as control the overwhelming stench which has engulfed residents of Achimota and its environs. The terrible odor emanating from the dump site has been a source of worry for residents of Hachimota and its environs. Several calls have been made to the AMA to deal with the situation, led by the MP of the area, Elizabeth Saki, who has even threatened to demonstrate against AMA. Accra Mayor Alfred Okoy van der Poy, however, says the AMA and its partners are working to clear the dump site after huge volumes of waste generated during the Christmas season. The site also served some districts outside the metropolis during that period. He adds that currently, dumping of refuse is limited to AMA waste management contractors only. Neighboring districts who have been dumping refuse at the Atomota dump site have been directed to desist with immediate effect. Though dumping will continue, he insists the act will be bounded by responsibility. I also directed that um, the capping should be continuous on a daily basis so that what is dumped is capped and then the fumigation of the area should be intensified so that we can eliminate to a very high extent the odor and the stench. We generate only 2,400 tons of refuse of which some of it was going over there. It was a very low uh, level amount of refuse that was going there. We will continue to dump it, but we'll continue to be very responsible. When Joy News visited the site this morning, personnel from Zoom Lion were spreading sands to cover the refuse, deodorizing and fumigating surrounding areas to control the awful smell and prevent outbreak of diseases. We have three objectives. To control the flies on the dump site, to disinfect the dump as a whole, then to control the odor. So we use chemical with deodorizers. Chemical we use uh, well have organized recommended uh, chemicals. So we don't use any chemical before you use it. We try to know the target organisms we are going to use it for before we apply it. The mayor assures that once a well-engineered landfill site at Grand South is constructed, the Atomota dam site as well as other smaller dam sites in the metropolis will be shut permanently. The dumping activities of refuse that has, you know, been the nature and culture of tradition of doing things is coming to an end because under the county project, that project is going to pave way for the engineering of a scientific landfill site. You know, we are working with Gasal so that we would acquire a land in the Dentra area. And with the acquisition of that land, 500 acres, we would operate an engineered landfill site in that area so that then we can bring a closure to all these pockets of landing and, and landfills that we have generated and operated all over the, this years. For residents of Hachimota, Alogoshi, Abofu, Christian Village and surrounding areas who have had to contend with this unpleasant odor on daily basis, Shutting the dump site permanently will definitely make them happy. We don't feel stay in our office staff. Any people, any client come to buy house from from us, they come by the house. Say, yeah, it's too much smelling. So sometimes you day office on the cook for us, we can't eat. If you go buy food for outside, you can't eat. Also, so flies, may come in more and other things. So we need to stop this bother here before. Maybe ending of this month. Timi Mompai, Utimi have sent in Gina because I saw no was so. It is a ball and a sa, not a descent in a bobe bi. And right, yeah, sorry, guest speaker of the British Naba. Would you have platform so I walk as a which is a ball and a bone too much? And to Timi, or Timi, and yet a Jumacra, a man in you. Would you want to know the anchor if I had a friend who free Kumasi last me cook mass who see Gana Hanum, Nasa, who much pa would do Kuma, Uncasagan and ye. A wida. Residents say all they want is a sigh of relief and a breath of fresh air. 
The National Service Scheme has deployed a total of 1,873 personnel to undertake their service for the 2012-2013 period in 165 health facilities across the country. The personnel are made up of qualified nurses and midwives who are expected to commence duty from 1st January 2013 following the successful completion of their professional examinations. Out of a total of 84,672 requests received from various organizations and educational institutions, the NSS deployed 68,210 personnel to undertake their national service for 2013. The 2012-2013 service posting saw 8,249 service personnel posted to the health sector, ranking second to education, which received the highest number of personnel for the service. In line with the MOU signed between the NSS and the Ministry of Health, 2,000 103 nurses and midwives commenced their national service in June 2012 and are currently serving in 166 health facilities. They are expected to complete their mandatory service in May 2013. In an interview with Joy News, the head of policy planning, monitoring and evaluation of the scheme, Idris Wal Hassan, noted that the deployment is in line with Section 3 of the GNSS Act 426 and intended to augment the number of nurses and midwives deployed already. The request that came to us that tells you that the health sector had also uh, a major need of our service personnel. The release of the deployment of the qualified nurses and midwives for the 2012-2013 service year was released. As we speak now, they are registering, they are going through the registration process to commence their service. They are posted to all the 10 regions of the country. Yes, and we released the postings of 1,873. He also advised them to see this exercise as an opportunity to serve their country and not to see it as a punishment. The to impact the knowledge they have gained on the less privileged ones in the communities that we, serve, we send them to. We just want to give them opportunity to serve and also feel what prevails in the hinterland. The NSS will also deploy some doctors in April this year after a successful completion of their professional examination. Well, the Ministry of Education has taken delivery of 11 buses worth 3.5 million Ghana cities for use by the National Service Scheme. The buses are to help in the mobilization efforts of the scheme and are to be distributed one to each of the 10 regions of the scheme. The Uton buses have a 35-seater capacity, fully air-conditioned and well-furnished. These are to be handed over to the various secretariat in all 10 regions with the national headquarters receiving one. Commissioning the buses, the Minister of Education, Lee Okran, said the government was interested in providing resources to the NSS to enable them meet its set targets. They've been doing well to support the Ministry of Education by donating some of the products from their farms to, to the schools, especially maize. And we as a government want to encourage the service and its personnel to do more. And for this reason, every means that can be used to make them feel comfortable will be adopted. The first phase is what you see here, the 11 U-turn buses. It will help the national service personnel from moving from one spot to the other, instead of going to hire vehicles and so on. The minister expressed the hope that the buses would be properly maintained. Executive Director of the Ghana National Service Scheme, Vincent Senam Kwagbenu, expressed gratitude to the government for the gesture, noting it was timely, and promised that the buses would be properly maintained. Since 1973, not a single facility like this has been given to the scheme to facilitate our youth mobilization effort. And you recall how we've been going to GPRTU and other institutions just to beg for buses to enhance our mobilization effort. We believe that these buses have come at the right time. Indeed, as government of the day has promised in its own vision that they will help the scheme expand on its operations. We want to thank you very much and want to assure you that these buses will be put to good use and the effect will be felt. The drivers of these buses are to go through a two weeks orientation on proper maintenance culture. The three-year bond issued, well, coming up next is the business report.
Welcome to the Business Report. The three-year bond issued by government today to finance maturing debt has been heavily oversubscribed. Business report checks indicates that government received 2.2 billion Ghana cities worth of bids from investors, though it set out to mobilize 400 million Ghana cities. It, however, accepted 402 million cities and returned the rest to the investors. A little over 90% of the bids came from foreign investors. The bond will have a yield of 16.7%. Government is also planning to sell two additional three-year bonds later this year. That would be auctioned in March and June. In all, government is hoping to raise 1.2 billion Ghana cities from these bonds. Let's move on to other stories now. Gone are the days when taxi drivers relied on wealthy individuals to buy them vehicles. Now, these days, savings and loans companies have brought into the business have bought into the business buying vehicles for drivers on an agreed term, which allows drivers to own their own vehicles. Jordi Four, Foltard, Satellite, Adishiman and Cross Border are just few of the numerous loans and service companies that are into this business. Agreements are based on the type and make of vehicles. Price ranges between 20,000 and 13,000 cities with an initial seed money deposited. Interestingly, depending on the agreement, one may end up paying double or triple the value of the car. The maintenance and servicing of these vehicles are the responsibilities of the drivers, whilst issues concerning the engine and insurance cover are paid by the companies. Well, that's according to one taxi driver, 37 lorry pack, boy. An executive member of the Adabraka Taxi Drivers Union sees the venture as credible. We, the drivers, we don't have the money, about 30,000, 24,000 to buy the home-use car. You don't have the money. So if somebody will buy it for you, about 12,000 and he say work and pay about 24,000, I think it's helping us. It's helping with the drivers. Only the deposit is worrying us. Some place, they will say they will take um, 4,000 or 3,000, which is too high for us. Amegacha Francis has 10 more months to own this Toyota Corolla, having paid 50 cities daily for the past two months. He is targeting a car worth 13,000 cities. We the company they buy, so you pay small, small. So every day I pay 50 Ghana. I get my own top one, like 20 Ghana or 15 Ghana. So how much do you get a day on average? A day I get like 1.2, like 1.2, 1 million. In most cases, these cars are fully insured and in case of damage, they are replaced. Felix Boy Corte, who has been in taxi business for the last 24 years, has two more years to go, paying 100 cities a week. We are going to calculate it a day. A day account for three years. That's 52, week, 52 weeks. It's one year. So you multiply by it. But we do pay it every Saturday. To me, it's good more than to work with the government. Because uh, what I can see is that uh, when you come, the money that you are going to spend, eh, if you are in the government services, you can't get that money. You'll be basing on your salary alone. The savings and loans companies are reaching the youth halfway by providing jobs and sustainable income. Well, away from the capital, let's go to China. China's export has recorded an increase of 14.1% in December from a year earlier, indicating a recovery in growth in the world's second largest economy. Most analysts had earlier forecast a figure closer to 4%. Imports also rose, climbing 6% and indicating stronger domestic demand. There have been worries about the state of China's economy after growth fell to a three-year low. China's slowdown, which saw growth decline to 7.4% in the July-September quarter, has affected various sectors of the economy. However, in recent weeks, China has released a string of encouraging economic data, which showed an improvement in November, continuing into December. Manufacturing activity in China expanded for a third month in a row in December. 
At the same time, the country's services sector, which includes construction and accounts for nearly 43% of China's overall economy, expanded at its fastest pace in four months in December. Industrial production, retail sales and fixed asset investment were all up in November while new home prices rose in 53 out of 70 major cities in China in November from the previous month. That was up from 35 cities, which recorded price rises in October. However, despite the optimism and indications of a rebound, China still faces potential hurdles that could derail its recovery, not least from ongoing issues surrounding its key trading partners. Investment tips and market data coming up, ending the business report. Center, your solution to quality lighting. Now let's do some sports. Ghana's preparations towards the 2013 Nations Cup has been boosted on the back of a massive win. The Black Stars earlier today posted a 3-0 win over seven-time AFCON champions Egypt in Abu Dhabi. Emmanuel Ajiman Badu reached... Now it's time to cross over to the lighter side of the bulletin. Marian Toure is standing by. Maria, what's up in entertainment or showbiz? Gifted today, I have three fabulous stories for you. John Jermaine, you know John Jermaine? Yeah. Um, he's launched a new album. Really? And uh, it was played today on one of our, you know, Sister our own Station's platforms. Joy yes, 99.7. So well, so I have this is where I hand over to Marian now. You stay tuned. Welcome to the Showbiz segment with me, Marian Turi. Showbiz is brought to you by kind courtesy of Airtel. <laughs> Why you dead though? Okay, so first I'll take you to the Americas before I bring you back home to Ghana. It has eight nominations in Britain and just one in America. Skyfall, the latest James Bond movie, failed to impress as the nominations for the 2013 Oscars were announced earlier today. U.S. Civil War drama Lincoln, based on attempts by the 16th President of the United States of America to stop slavery, leads the nominations pack at the 85th Academy Awards for 12 nominations. In spite of the hype it has received and the successes it chalked at the box office, the latest installment of the 007 franchise, Skyfall, failed to secure the much-anticipated Best Picture nod. In fact, Skyfall managed only one nomination at the upcoming Oscars, Best Original Song. Although the movie has received eight nominations at the BAFTAs, it seems the movie did not make much of an impact on members of the Academy. But it is not exactly surprising as no Bond film has been nominated for an Oscar. Speaking of surprises, the romantic comedy Silver Linings Playbook pulled a smooth one, securing nominations in all four acting categories, the first movie to do so in 30 years. Playbook received eight nods in total, with its lead actors Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence nominated for Best Actor and Best Actress respectively. Jackie Weaver and Robert De Niro also received nominations as Best Supporting Actress and Actor respectively for their roles in Silver Linings Playbook. Five of Hollywood's top males are in the running for the Best Actor Award, Daniel Day-Lewis for Lincoln, 
Denzel Washington for Flight, Hugh Jackman for Les Miserables, Bradley Cooper for Silver Linings Playbook, and Joaquin Phoenix for The Master. In the Best Actress category, Naomi Watts is nominated for her role in The Impossible, Jessica Chastain for Zero Dark Thirty, Jennifer Lawrence for Silver Linings Playbook, Emmanuel River for Amour, and Kivenjani Wallace for Beast of the Southern Wild. Nine-year-old Kivenjani and 85-year-old Emmanuel made history with their nominations as the youngest and oldest Best Actress nominees in Oscar history. Nine movies made it to the final list for Best Picture. They are Beasts of the Southern Wild, Silver Linings Playbook, Zero Dark Thirty, Lincoln, Les Miserables, Life of Pi, Amour, Django Unchained, and Argo. Nominees for Best Director are David O. Russell for Silver Linings Playbook, Ang Lee for Life of Pi, Steven Spielberg for Lincoln, Michael Haneke for Amour, and Ben Zeitlin for Beast of the Southern Wild. Spielberg will clock a hat-trick should he win the Best Director Award at the Oscars this year. That will make him equal to Frank Capra and William Wyler, who have both earned three directing Oscars, and John Ford, who has received four. And before I take leave of you, Ghanaian pop singer and TV presenter John Germain has unveiled a single on his second album, Enigma. The single, In Her Arms, received its first airplay on Joy FM's Drive Time show earlier this evening. Right after the song's debut on Joy FM, our showbiz reporter Gladys Oredu had an exclusive conversation with John Germain about his album, Enigma, and life in general. He tells her his music is doing very well on the market, both locally and internationally. The pop singer and TV presenter who says he is a shy guy gained global attention when multiple Grammy award-winning rock singer Chris Martin mentioned that he likes a song titled Quiver on his This Is Who I Am album. John tells us that he had always dreamt of becoming a musician and going into radio and TV broadcasting was by sheer accident. He premiered a single, In Her Arms, from his Enigma album today on our sister radio station, Joy 99.7 FM, on the Drive Time Show. And this being his first TV chat after the radio premiere, John did not hesitate to give us a live heel of the track. You must go away, that she says, go away. Does she says, go away, this is us. Well, it appears our musicians are devising new ways of selling their albums, dropping one single after the other before releasing the full album. The new business trick, huh? But John says his music is doing amazingly well on the market. In terms of sales, it, it's amazing uh, because um, I don't know what... what it, it looks like a disadvantage for me or something that's not going well for me turned out to be an advantage because when you listen to when we put together 10 radio stations and you listen to um, you tune in every all the radio stations put them all that listen to them from morning to evening the possibility to play as many song is probably 90 percent you listen to all those radio stations the possibility my songs will be played is probably 10 or 20 percent and that's the reason why people buy my albums because you can't hear them on radio if you really like them you've heard about them and you like them you need to go buy them and that's the reason why my album sold really well many people think of john as someone who's full of himself but he tries to explain what could have given rise to that popular misconception um i, I, was, I don't really know what to say but i for that i think i've been getting it since i was in preparatory school um I'm, I'm a bit of a quiet person and sometimes i'm a bit shy as well so i'm, I'm quiet and um sometimes just people get the impression uh, i've read on social networks that um, i'm arrogant i'm rude with charming but usually um, anybody who meets me goes like oh so you're not really like that 37 year old john germain tells a rather emotional story about his love relationship but he has two children he's so proud of and ladies guess what this cute man is very single and still searching. The Enigma album will be released sometime this year and John is looking forward to a brighter 2013. Besides, he has a couple of stuff up his sleeve, like a John Germain concert, a clothing line, and what is in vogue for our celebrities, establishing a foundation. So February 2013, Airtel, why you dead though?
Well, this is how we wrap up the prime time news on Joy News Channel. But before we go, a quick recap of our top stories. The Supreme Court has indefinitely adjourned the hearing of a motion filed by the NDC seeking to join President John Mahama as respondent in NPP's petition against the declaration of last month's election results. Lawyers for the NPP argued that the composition of the court presided over by Justice William Atuguba is skewed against them. Upper West Regional Police Commanders arrested five suspects in connection with a recent armed robbery attack against the Upper West Regional Minister Amin Amedu Suleimani last, late last month. Four of the suspects are Fulanis from Burkina Faso. The Electoral Commission has set Tuesday, 5th February as the date to hold by-elections in the Akachi South constituency following the appointment of Doa Jaho as Speaker of Parliament. Savings and loans companies have bought into the business of work and pay, which is making it possible for several taxi drivers to own their vehicles after the purchase of price has been recovered. On the international front, Malian troops have surrounded the strategic central town of Duenza in a push to capture it for militant Islamists. So that's all for tonight. But for more news, you can log on to myjoyonline.com. Thanks for your time. My name is Gifty Amdoafia. Good evening.